We are joined now by Judy Sullivan, the first female engineer in NASA's spacecraft operations. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, my pleasure. It's uh, fun to be part of this. Uh, you know, and you were part of the Apollo 11 mission 50 years ago, and you spoke to Neil Armstrong right before he went up into space. That's right. What, what did you say to him? Well, listen, it wasn't conversation per se. Um, I was in the suit lab with him, and my system was the biomedical system that I was in charge of. And that means sensors, electrocardiogram sensors, and also two extra ones for breathing rate and depth. And that's what we had. And I had a tall brush recorder where all three astronauts' data would be showing. And they, meanwhile, each have their own station for getting their spacesuit on. So the interaction I have with Neil is that he's, I'm like, I could touch him. He's like 15 inches away. His spacesuit is laid out. And when he got on, there were times when there was a delay that he would be lying right there. But I didn't talk to him. He needed quiet time. But, but, but didn't he say, like, right before he went up, yes. by Judy, or, or... That's right, Bo. Um, when they put his helmet on, what you're seeing today is the three of the astronauts coming out of the manned operation building. Mm -hmm. And when he got ready to leave the suit lab, they put his helmet on, he picked up his oxygen tank, and he said goodbye to his suit technicians. And he looked over and he said goodbye, Judy. And, you know, I don't know that that registered so much, but it came back to me with, as all the hype began for Apollo 11. You know, and you're one of the years. very few women working in NASA at the time. Um, you know, what was that like? Do, was there kind of, were you looked at differently because it was basically an agency run by men? Oh, definitely. I was the first, actually, in spacecraft operations. Mm -hmm. And um, it was special in a way because the other biomedical engineers were all like big brothers. They were very protective. And um, I didn't, I got teased a lot. It's funny. But I did not have a thin skin. I enjoyed that. But I had nicknames. I had that guy, Sullivan, and the, the guys would just love to tell some Grumman or North American engineer that needed some information. Well, you have to go talk to that guy, Sullivan, about it. But it wasn't a guy, it was you. <laughs> it was me. And their faces were so funny when they'd walk in. The other is this. This is my other nickname. Okay. One of the test conductors did this with soldering. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. It's a, a little female engineer with her headset on because I was the only female voice on this 101 channel. But when you're gonna talk over the net, you have to push a button at your waist. Mm -hmm. And if I leaned on that button, not, not often, but one time, there was no doubt who it was. But this is labeled S-L-E. And that was my other nickname, Soft Lumpy Engineer. <laughs> I mean, 50 years, can, does it just seem like it was yesterday? It does. Do you know what? Um, but with all the approach and all the publicity that's happened, on television to get the world ready for this celebration. It brought memories deep from within. But yes, and I see the pictures of me, and I'm 26 years old. Well, that doesn't and age that, you now, so yeah. because you age backwards. But Judy, that's all the time we have for today. It goes by so fast, but your story is fascinating. And, and, and before we leave, I know you really wanted to push um, STEM right. for women going into STEM. So thank you so much for that. We'll be back right after this.